Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. It is a pleasure and is an honor to have you guys here with me today. And if you are joining me on this day, this is the last day of the Queen Me series. Five Simple Yet Essential Tips for the Single Queen. Now, this is a series I created for Christian single women that have a desire to be whole, healthy, balanced women of God that may or may not want to get married because it is not just specific to women that want to get married. But I do kind of focus on that because many of us are called to marriage and we have to prepare for that. So this series is, is geared toward just cultivating yourself as a queen, cultivating yourself as the woman that God wants you to be. Now, I also encourage men to listen as well. It may give you a new perspective on women that you may have never thought about before. So a man listening is totally encouraged. I appreciate it. It can also maybe teach you how to pray for your woman of God or for a friend or a sister or your mom, your aunts. It may just give you some perspective. And again, when you are a man after God's own heart, then you have a desire to be kind and be a gentleman toward his daughters. So this could also help you with that as well. Now, each one of my series comes with a free ebook to follow along with each day. But this one is special to me, y'all, because the Queen Me ebook also has call to action goal sheets and level up questions for each day. So if you have it, make sure that you hit the link below this podcast and download your Queen Me ebook with the call to action goal sheets and the level up questions. And I'm so happy because this particular series has a special addition to it. And at the end of each show, I end with the married moment. And it's basically a married woman who gives advice that she wished she would have gotten before she was married and started a family. So make sure that you listen to today's episode in its entirety. And guys, I want you to make sure you stay on top of our hashtags for this series. There are three of them. There are Queen Me Now. Grow, glean, glow, and live your authentic purpose. So with that being said, I just want to give you guys a quick recap of the other four days so that you can kind of be on the same page with us. Again, if you just jumped in today, go back and listen to the whole series. I really think it'll bless you. And if it does not bless you, you may actually be led to send it to someone else. I am fully aware that what I do ain't for everybody. I just know God tells me to do it and I have to do it and I have to be obedient. So again, Some of you may just be getting that tug to say, hey, you know what? Let me pass this on to somebody. May not be my cup of tea, but I think it might bless another person. So I do encourage that. And again, I really do appreciate it, even whether you like it or not. You're still giving me your time. So I have to say thank you for that because it means a lot to me. You know, you've committed a certain certain amount of time to your day for me, and that does not go unnoticed. And God knows my heart, and I have a desire to serve him and his people. So with that being said... You know, guys, day one, excuse me, we talked about being a light. And we basically talked about the God-given light that God has already placed in you that you didn't even have a choice about. He just gave you this light to shine so brightly for him. And we just talked about how to access that and what that would look like on your journey as you are cultivating yourself to be a queen. Day two, guys, we talked about being a queen. And I think that's pretty obvious. I just talked about the characteristics of what royalty does, what you do as a woman of royalty. And day three is to be an example. Basically, following the example of Christ and working on how you can follow that same example in your own life. Day four is be a voice. What are you speaking on? Are you practicing uh, putting yourself in positions to have mentors and gain wisdom. What is your voice like? What are you speaking on? What are you standing on? So again, with all of these, we end up on our final day. And I think it's very fitting because it really just kind of sums up everything. Because if you don't do this one last tip, none of the other tips even matter, to be very honest with you. It don't matter. Because at the end of the day, if you are not this one thing, everything else is null and void. 
So if you have the book, you know what it is. But if you don't, today is called Be Yourself. You are a masterpiece. If you've been following this series, you'll notice everything that I said on each day, the, the, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every day I said B-A, 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 B-A. But today I take the A out and I say be yourself. Not be a person like yourself, but be yourself. And if you also paid attention, each day I asked a question, be a voice, and then I asked a question, be an example. Then I asked a question. Well, today it's be yourself and there is no question. It is just a statement with an exclamation point on the end. You are a masterpiece. So y'all, it's not in question. You know, you being a masterpiece and being who God called you to be, it's just not in question. It's just a fact. And even if you don't believe it about yourself, God believes it for you. Yes, he really does believe it for you. He absolutely does. So with that being said, let's start off with our scripture for today. And it is Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. You probably heard a million times, you're a masterpiece, or this is a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece. You know, I'm sure at some point in your life, you've heard that word, you've come across that word, but I want to ask you something. Have you ever broken it down? Okay. Like really taking time to break down what it means. Now, if you break down the word masterpiece, it's Two different independent words that can stand on their own without each other. So let's start. Master. Okay. Master means to overcome or defeat. And peace. P-I-E-C-E -E, means a portion or part that has been separated from a whole. Okay. So in essence, you are separated and you stand out, unique, and you are designed to overcome and defeat Whatever stands in your way. Because God is letting you know off the top, listen. I'm putting this thing on you. as a, to, you, you, you already have the ability to master and overcome defeat. And in addition to that, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to set you apart. And I'm going to make you a masterpiece. So in, in any situation, on your own, with me first in your life, trusting me every step of the way, you are my masterpiece. So there's nothing that can stop you as long as you keep me first in your life, okay? So check this out. God has basically said that there is no one else like you and nothing can change that. So straight up, y'all, no matter how bad your day is, no matter what you're thinking about yourself, you just can't compete with God because nothing can change the fact that he made you a masterpiece and it just is what it is. If God says it, that settles it. So you really can't get around your dopeness, even if you try it. And personally... I think that's pretty amazing because days I flip flop and I'm in my feelings and I'm in my flesh because I'm a human being to be able to stand on that word that Ephesians 2 10 that saves my life many days because it reminds me that it's bigger than me. And if God thinks that I'm a masterpiece, nobody can do anything about that. Now to top it off in your extraordinary framework, you have the power to master the very best version of yourself. So tell me, ladies, how do you see yourself? And not how do I see my selfie, but how do I see me? Like if you're looking in the mirror, when you're looking at the whole me thing, like this is me, how do I see myself? What is it about me? Like what is my perception? What is my understanding of me? I really want you to contemplate that and give that thought. You really want to take a moment to see exactly where you stand with yourself. Really think about it. Now, when you think about this, don't think about it based on what others have said or thought about you. Because then it'll take you to the place of, how do I see God? Like, not how do I feel after I hear some Jesus-y stuff and get excited. No, no. But how do I know that I truly love God? The one that has designed me 
in such a magnificent way, this masterpiece, how do I know that I love him? See, if you called yesterday, yesterday's question was, how do I know that I, when did I know that I trusted God? Today is different. Today is about love. When have you seen the patience of God? When have you seen the kindness of God? When have you seen that God did not show envy and he did not show impatience? Because those are the attributes of love. So when did you know you loved God? Think about it. See, how you answer these questions will determine if you are an undervalued masterpiece. Because if you're an undervalued masterpiece, then you are not really understanding what God had in mind when he created you. And you really need to get to the bottom of that. Because here's the thing. God has already done the work perfectly when it comes to you. How he created you was perfect. But the imperfect part, the imperfection part comes in when we have to walk out the journey. That's where it gets hard. And that's where many of us get stuck. Because here's the thing. When you hear someone call something a masterpiece, you know that it'll be top dollar. It'll be the best of the best. Well, that's you too. So you have to rise up to who you are, ladies. Like, be yourself. Like, seriously, be yourself. I say it all the time, you are amazing, but y'all, I'm not making that up. When you get off of this thing, go Google the definition of amazing. And right next to it, you can put your picture right next to it. That's I don't even have to know you to know that's true. That's just fact based on the word of God. You are already amazing. You are already a, a king's kid. You pretty much can't get out of, no matter how low you may think of yourself, God will never see you that way. He will never join that pity party. He will never get on that train with you because he wants you to be yourself. Y'all, he genuinely wants you to be yourself. So I want you to start reflecting today on this truth. You can't help it. You were born like this. So now you have to catch up to how God sees you. You have to catch up to that space. Because if you don't do that, you can miss the very call that God has on your life because you're too caught up in undervaluing yourself and thinking that you're inadequate because you're thinking about what you're feeling about yourself or what somebody else is feeling about you. And you have to get how you feel about you on the same page with what God feels about you, not what everybody else is saying. Because even if people are saying good things, what if they stop one day? Where is that going to leave you? So you have to know for yourself that you are truly an epic work of art concerning God. And the Bible even says, I believe it's in Psalm 139, 14, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I think that's one of the best lines God ever dropped. You're talking about spitting balls? That might be the illest right there. <laughs> that might be it. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Picture that. Now, I want you to think about this. It's time to level up. Based on what we just talked about with you being yourself, let's see how we can level up. Question number one. Do you ever fake the funk? Quote, unquote, depending on the situation. Now, I told you in some of the other days, and if this is your first day, let me keep it 100 with you. Some of you may come into this series thinking, oh, this is cool. This is cool information. But... It may really hit a nerve. You may really be drawn to tears or really begin questioning things because that's what it's for. Yo, the adversary does not want us to be healed. I told you this series is about being whole. This is about being balanced. So we have to call those things out in us that might be a little embarrassing. We may have to call those things out in us that's going to humble us, or humble us, that's going to shut us down. It's going to make us say, you know what, I got to get myself together. Because when people look at me, I look good. My pictures look great. Everything in my life looks perfect. But I'm really a mess on the inside. I'm kind of jacked up. I'm not dealing with some stuff that happened to me was I, when I was a kid. You know, I might have felt abandoned. My parent might have died. I might have had to move a bunch of times. I never got my bearings. Um, people that I thought were my friends betrayed me. I never healed from that. Y'all, it's some stuff that may have caused bitterness to take root. 
that you have not recognized. There's some stuff that's causing you to not be your real self because you're not even attracting the right relationships. I'm going to be honest with you. This is prophetic coming through right now. Some of y'all got people, God going to wipe out the whole crew. Yep, I said it. He going to wipe out the whole crew. Straight up. Because you don't realize in the years of not being who you really are, you've attracted people that don't really belong there. They are attracted to the you that you created. But when you start peeling back the layers and you get to who you really are, those people won't fit anymore. You watch what I tell you. Now, some of you, you got some lifers. God has blessed you with some lifetime friends, some lifetime relationships. And even once you come into who you really are, they're still not going to go anywhere. But that's going to be few and far between. That might be one person. That might be two people sticking around. Because God is trying to get you to be your total, true self in this hour, in this season. Now, if you are faking the funk, you're going to have to ask yourself why. Because if there's anything in you causing you to be fake about something, it means that you're not being authentic. And there's something in you that's not being honest and it's causing you to be a lesser version of yourself. And you don't want that. That's not who God called you to be. We've all done it. And again, I still have to walk those things out too. Because here's the thing. Sometimes you've been doing something for so long, you get healed from it. But then you have to unlearn what you've done habitually in response to that. So you may be healed from doing one thing, but something may come up and you just may do it out of habit. And you say, wait a minute, let me snap out of this. I don't do this anymore. I don't get down like this anymore. That's a real thing. And it's okay. Because everybody goes through that on some level when you are going through the healing process. Now, that leads me to question number two. What would you like to change about yourself? I would suggest whatever it is, practice doing a new thing that you want to change for 21 days in a row and see if it sticks. Don't skip a day. 21 days in a row. They say it takes 21 days to, to solidify a habit. So see if that works for you. If it doesn't, I want you to get down to brass tacks and say, okay, God, why isn't this changing for me? This is why I keep encouraging, praying and fasting, consecrating. Because when you get with the Lord by yourself consistently, you know his voice. So God is going to start giving you answers to the things that have been confusing you and plaguing you concerning your situation. Because he's trying to get you to the best part of you. He's trying to get you to the, to the optimum level of who you can be. Because this is what he desires for you. This is what you call his perfect will. Some of you have been doing great, but you're living in his permissive will. You may not want to hear that, but there's even better than what you have. Really, truly. Look up permissive will versus perfect will. That'll actually be a podcast one day. Because I know a lot of people don't know the difference between the two. But Google it. And see it. See what God is saying about that. But you want God's perfect will in this season. You don't want the permissive anymore. You want to jump right into his perfect will because that's when you know you'll be operating from his best. Now, the last question is this. And it's an interesting question, but I really want you to think about it. What makes you smile about yourself? Like when you think about you, is there something about you you think about and you say, oh, yeah, all right, I like that about me. And you smile. You know why I'm asking you that? Because if you can figure out what makes you smile about you one small thing, then, then you, it would also illuminate what doesn't make you smile when you think about your life and yourself. And then when you see that part, you can begin to address that so that you can learn how to begin to smile even in the things that haven't changed, even in the things that have hurt you in the past. You will begin to smile because you're feeling and walking in who God is rising you up to be. You find a reason to smile just because God made you a masterpiece. You find a reason to smile just because you're fearfully and wonderfully made and it's not contingent upon somebody else liking you, somebody else desiring you. You're smiling because you're because of you. You are the cause of your smile. And that's what I want you to think about today. Now, those are your three level up questions. Now, as you know, each ebook comes with the call to action goal sheets. Now, today's call to action goal request is this. What are your three personal best goals? 
What three things in your life you want to see a personal best at? You want to raise the bar and you want to go to a personal best. Because what this is going to also bring to you is peace, the other peace. Not the P-I-E-C-E, but the P-E-A-C-E. So with that, I want you to be in the full knowledge that you are God's masterpiece and you're walking in that. Because when you know that you are God's masterpiece, then you will begin to master peace. P-E-A-C-E. So guys, that is the end of the Queen Me series. I genuinely hope that it blessed you. I hope that you were able to take some, some gems from that, take some notes, really, you know, start working on some new goals so that you can cultivate yourself as a queen. And I'm so excited that you guys were able to share with me and listen in on these tips for the week. Now, that part is over, but the series is not quite done yet until we get to the married moment, which is where we are now. Now, every day, these tips were super dope. And I think I also encourage you to make sure you either... uh Type them out in your note, uh, your notepad on your phone or get a notebook where you can talk about these things because you want to be able to add value. You want to be on top of it when it's time for God to bring your spouse. You want to be able to do the work now because you want to treat this part of your life as an investment. I treat this part of my life as an investment for my future. When I'm doing things, I'm thinking about my husband. I'm thinking about my children. I'm thinking about the empire that we're going to be building together. I'm already building one on my own. I, be I believe and trust God. He has a husband for me that's doing the same thing. So when we come together, I already have the tools. I'm already walking in the gifts, talents, and anointing that's going to be complementary to what he's doing, just as he is going to be able to do that for me as well. So with that being said, we want to wrap this thing up with the married moment. And this is a wonderful bride she has children, she has a wonderful husband, and she shared some knowledge on what she felt in a spiritual capacity should be going on right now as a single woman preparing to be married. So here's what she says. She says, basically, single women who are called to marriage have to choose this life because it is work and it requires to focus, it re excuse me, and it requires focus to do all of this while living in faith and on purpose. She says, read scriptures on marriage, unity, and forgiveness. Now that's good right there. I got to interject. That's good. I never heard anybody say read scriptures on unity in regard to marriage and read scriptures on forgiveness. That is very, very rich. I really believe my mumsy taught me a long time ago. She said, Robin, if you can forgive somebody, then you will see a miracle. She said, I really believe forgiveness causes miracles to happen. So I think that that's a wonderful sentiment from this bride. Now let's continue. She says, these will give you a blueprint for God's image of what you and your spouse are called to do as a couple. But most of all, trust God to place you with the man who you will open up to and who will open up to you too. You both will find peace there goes that word again, P-E-A-C-E. -E. You both will find peace within the marriage when you learn to keep your discussions, goals, and prayers between you and God. Pray for guidance from the Holy Spirit, and God will send a minister, mentor, or prophet to shed light on your union. Wow. So dope. Absolutely love, love, love that advice. I believe every day this week, guys, we covered all the bases, everything from you, spirit, mind, children, your husband in particular, and how you should interact with him. I know one of the wives encouraged making a list. I am so blessed by this, and they've blessed me, y'all. Every tip that I've gotten, I'm working on these right now, because I don't know the day or the hour, but when the season shifts and changes, and I'm walking into marriage, I want to be prepared as best as possible, because the truth of the matter is this, ladies. Even as you're cultivating as a single woman, even if some of you are not prepared for marriage, but for those of you who are, you are still going to have bumps in the road. You're still going to have to learn new mistakes because you and your husband are your own entity. You're your own unit. So that's why if you can take 
as much wisdom as possible and begin to work on it now so that you can be the best version of yourself once it's presented, you're going to really get to see the kind of marriage that we don't see anymore. It is very rare that we see healthy, happy marriages where people are genuinely happy and they're not hating each other. You are setting yourself up to win when you do this and you are spending time with God. You are genuinely speaking to the Lord. And here's something I'm going to say that's coming to me now before I end this once and for all. If you speak to God, pray fast and continue to consecrate. Hear God for yourself in quiet time by yourself concerning your mate when that man presents himself to you you're gonna know that's your husband even if god said oh that's your husband you're gonna know because let me tell you something the enemy is telling people certain people their husband and is not either trust me it's not and they're really taking it and running with it and they're thinking that it's god and it's not so that's why i'm telling you if nothing else as you begin to master peace a part of your peace is going to be you're going to know the difference between counterfeit information and true information from the Lord. You're going to know the difference between people really supporting you and people secretly hating you. You're going to know the difference between an adversary trying to send fake jesus godly people to encourage you versus people who really do hear from the Father concerning you. So, with that being said, I am so grateful again for you being here with this series. And again, this has been the Queen Me series. Five simple yet essential tips for the single queen. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed it. You join me for my next series. Make sure you hit the link below this podcast. And I have a comprehensive list of all of the series that will be coming up for the rest of this year. And also you can join me every Wednesday on my blog cast. And that's when I make a blog, co- blog post and I do a podcast about it. So God bless you and may he keep you. And remember, I am wired to inspire. I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at I'mWiredToInspire.com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five-star rating on iTunes. For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspirationspecialist.life or I'mWiredToInspire.com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.